uh, coach was kind of talking about what he wanted out of the scrimmage and kind of what the takeaway was. I guess for you personally and for a team perspective, kind of same question. What were you hoping to get and what did you get out of it? Oh, we wanted to play uh, our first basketball game, real basketball game together. We wanted to knock a lot of dust off, being in Moody, not knowing how the fans are, them not understanding how competitive the league really is and um, the expectation that, you know, the community holds on us. Um, but um, we had a great takeaway from the game. We knew what we wanted. We wanted to play hard, first of all, defensively, defensively mindset. I believe we did that. Turnovers messed us up in that category a little bit because you take one away and you give it right back. But um, you know, it's, it's really an uphill battle with us right now. And you know, we got a lot of room to grow. We got you know a, a lot of work to do. But um, every day it's really constant and like getting better. Now that you've had uh, a, a scrimmage and an exhibition under your belt, I mean, how much is, is there still you know, thinking being done rather than just kind of going out and playing the system for you? Um, well, you know, for me and for this team, you really want to peak out in, in January and February, you know. Um, we've been at it since um, May and June, and you start to feel like May, June, compared to, you know, now we're in November, you want to be somewhere. But, um, you know, we still got a long way to go. And um, we wanted to be in January and in February where we start to really figure out you know, where we, where we want to be and where we're supposed to be as a team. We have guys who are still yet trying to figure it out with hell of potential. And um, we have guys like me who just need to continue to learn how to be consistent in league and um, not take a day off in that aspect. Can that be tough, being a competitive person and maybe wanting perfection now to understand that it is part of a process and that you guys are building towards something? Yes, it is tough. It's, it's a tough thing. But when I came in last year with Coach Jank, I think he brought in about six or seven new as well. Um, we had a lot more leaders, you know. It's um, it's a lot younger team this year, and then that's where my role comes in play to be the leader. And then I find out that I thought I was a good leader, and then I was like, okay, I'm not as consistent as, as I need to be, or my leadership compared to everybody else's isn't where it needs to be. And um, you, know, you got to kill the head of the snake, and you got to really start with the head of the snake. And um, my job is to to be a double downer on whatever Coach Lanier wants for this team, and I'm gonna have to be a better player at that in person. Is this for you? This is three coaches in three years you played for. What's all this change been like for you? Um, I say it every time. The change is refreshing. When I came in last year with Jank, I could not speak any different about that, and and, and um, what I went through. Like I said back in media day, it was all about maturation for me, experiencing something totally different, accepting a different role, and still being the same person every day. You know that's where respect comes into play. And uh, Coach Manier just came in here, and uh, he's a hard hat guy, and he wants to go to work. And um, he trusted everybody who was here, and he gave all of us an opportunity to come back. And with that opportunity and that blessing that he gave us to come back and work hard, um, being a competitor, you want to kind of, you know, win with him now. Like, it's very, very intentional to win with him. So um, I definitely got to be better. But with Coach Lanier and, and all these three coaches that I've had, I've learned something totally different, and I've also um, gained so much from all three of them. So um, I'm appreciative. Coach mentioned uh, that he gets excited about competitiveness and, and being with people that he enjoys uh, you know, coaching or working with. Uh, where would you rank the team's overall competitiveness if you were in Coach Lanier's shoes right now? Compared to all his other teams? No, just compared to where maybe he wants it. Where he wants it. Um, if we could say out of five, I'd give us a two or three right now based on that. Um, we just make a lot of mental mistakes. You know, you can be competitive and you can want it really bad and you can want it really bad for yourself, but um, it's a team sport. So I can go into a game and say I'm prepared and I was ready to go. I don't know why we played in that, of that caliber. I don't know why I played like that. And it's because I was focused on myself and how good I was going to play or maybe how good I was going to shoot. You know, maybe if I took the pressure off and worried about what I could do and I put the pressure on making sure everybody was ready as a team, you know, they all would have fell in order for all of us. So. Um, we just had a quick conversation, me and Coach Lanier and the whole team is Coach Lanier. A lot of our guys are, are new here and are in new positions where they get a bigger opportunity to showcase who they are. And um, with that opportunity, you know, we just have to be more conscious of what's the you know, most important thing, and that's coming in, defending, getting on the first loose ball, not turning the ball over, and, and the shots and everything else will fall. What do you think, like, Coach's increasingly high standard, like, helps this team do? You know, Coach has a super high standard. Uh, man, the standard for this team, you know, um, just the way we practice, first of all. You know, he sets the standard in practice every day, whether it's, you know, starting with board taps or finishing with 86 layups in two minutes or, 
you know, guard one-on-one full turns half court. You know, he's really setting the tone and setting the pace for this team every day. And uh, like I said, as a leader, I have to double down on what he desires, you know. So I have to come in and I have to be just as ready. So if he says on the line, 10 second sprint, I got to be the first in 10 second sprint, you know. So that's where the toughness comes into play. And then being human, you have days where you want to come in and be, you know, tired. Or you have days where you come and it's like, okay, maybe not a 10 a day. Maybe I feel like a nine. I'm going to give 100% of my nine, you know. But um, just trying to be as consistent as I can be, leading and pushing everybody. And then um, first and foremost, pushing myself to be my best self um, is what go along with him and his intensity. As far as conditioning and the summer workouts that you guys put in, did you notice any changes or um, do you feel like you guys are in better shape this season? Is that something you mentioned peaking later in the year? Definitely in better shape. Um, we're really um, in good shape, I feel like, other than having guys experience injury. Um, you experience injury, you sit out two, three days, or you know, we can have two, three weeks. You come back and you gotta learn how to get that first and that second win, you gotta remember what that feels like. And um, the defense, how we play, picking up full court, you tend to get really tired, you know, and, and when you start and it's that 20 minute mark and you look up and it's 18.30 on the clock and you only did one full turn and you know, on defense, you're like, okay, well, where's that second win? And you're kind of begging for that second win. But that's where, you know, we have guys who come off the bench who are just as conditioned and uh, who are just as prepared to defend. And um, you know, we've got to be better at, at, at pushing each other, you know, whether you're starting, whether you're coming off the bench, the intensity and, and how we practice today and yesterday um, is how we need to really, really perform on the court. Coach talked about looking at the eyes of the timeout during that game and seeing more self-doubt than mm -hmm. he would like. I guess and he, his whole goal is to have everyone looking back with confidence. Right. I guess is that something early in the season that you guys can manufacture without, you know, that you can create, or is it something that maybe you kind of have to go through it and create? Well, you definitely have to go through it. Um, my role last year, being the third, fourth guy on the team, um, in, a bad, in a timeout, I could be the guy who, you know, communicates really well and gets everybody, makes sure everybody stays poised. But when I get on the court, you know, I know I'm the third, fourth option, you know, so I know I got to go through, you got to go through Kendrick, you may go through Michael, you may go through Marcus before it goes to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have that type of cushion. Uh, we have a lot of new guys, like I said, who are stepping up in the new roles, who come from schools where they experience self-doubt, and um, they're still yet trying to overcome the self-doubt here. So when you're in a timeout and you're down one, or you're up two against Paul Quinn, you're looking around like, what's going on? You're looking for somebody to check and help you out. And it's really you, you know, that you have to, um, diffusion of responsibility. We're all looking around for somebody to pick us up when it needs to be me, you know, who takes that charge, when it needs to be Zurich, who takes that charge, and when it needs to be all five of us together or three of us together to take charge of a 15 to 16.